Hi, and welcome back to Recipes Even You Can't Fuck Up. Tonight we are going to have chicken paprikash with rice and a warm cranberry compote. Don't worry, this is going to be really easy, almost impossible to fuck up. For this recipe, we are going to use uh, leg and thigh quarters. I usually use a quarter chicken, but they didn't have it this time. So we're going to have two packages here because they had three piece and I wanted to have four pieces but can't have everything you want. So we need the chicken, we need sweet Hungarian paprika because the Spanish one has no flavor. In this case we need it. This is the brand I use. You need salt, you need garlic powder, you need a baking pan that you have covered with heavy duty foil because it's going to be a lot easier to clean up. So now my lovely wife here is going to wash the chicken because you don't know where it's been and you don't know who's been handling it. Right honey? Yep, you're right. So what are you doing here? Washing the chicken. I'm giving it a bath. And we're going to watch this. Are you using hot or cold water? Cold water. Okay, the first step to the recipe, and this is very important, before you do anything, you're going to turn on your oven and you're going to set it to 375. Just like that. This is called preheating because when the chicken goes in the oven, you want the oven to be hot. That way you know that when this is done, the chicken's going to be done. Put it into a cold oven, it's going to take longer to cook. Okay, once you've washed your chicken, and you do have to wash your chicken, don't use soap, just use water. But once you've washed it, arrange it on your baking sheet. Just think of a 69 and you'll be okay. Just put them like this. And now we're going to get to seasoning. We're going to put a little salt. Not a lot, just a little bit. And we're going to follow that up with our garlic powder. And we're going to be liberal. Just think Bernie Sanders. Liberal means generous. And now this is chicken paprikash and it wouldn't be chicken paprikash without the paprika. So we're going to put our paprika on. Be generous because this is going to make a nice crust that's going to force all the fat in this chicken out of the chicken and into the pan where you're not going to eat it unless you're a masochist. If you're a masochist, <laughs> I just got slapped for saying masochist. What the fuck anyway, does that mean? Somebody who likes pain. Assholes. Well, you know, teach their own. And there we go. Pretty, huh? And now we're going to put our chicken into our preheated oven. Like so. Close the door. And now we are going to set the timer for 45 minutes. I love the timer on my oven. It always gives me a hard time. 45 minutes. Stop. While our chicken is cooking, we're going to start the second part of this. The warm cranberry compote. For this, what we're going to need is three quarters of a cup of sugar. Use a measuring cup. Every house should have them. So three quarters of a cup of sugar, one cup of water, one bag of cranberries, double handful of raisins. My wife for some reason keeps them in the freezer so that's where ours were. And, to, and a little bit of Grand Marnier to finish it off. We'll get to that part in a few minutes. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put our cranberries in our colander. There's always one that doesn't want to come out of the bag. And we're going to look through and first see if there's any rotten ones, which there aren't. And then we're going to rinse them off because once again, you never know who's been handling these things. And if you don't know where they've been, 
you don't want to eat them. Okay, leave them aside for a second. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put one cup of water into our pan. We're going to put three quarters of a cup of sugar into our pan. We are going to throw a good double handful of raisins into our pan. It's about one cup, you guys. And we're going to turn the flame on. And we're going to leave it alone until it comes to a boil. Every once in a while at this point, you want to just give it a little bit of a stir. It helps the sugar evaporate. You should use a wooden spoon for this because a wooden spoon is not going to react with anything chemically and it's also not going to scratch the hell out of your pot. Now when you get married you should buy a whole set of wooden spoons. When you've been married about 13 years like we have it starts to look like this which is fine. It's not going to hurt anything and it shows you know how to cook. So when your mother-in-law comes over to the house you can tell her to shut up. You actually do cook for her daughter. Now we're doing this recipe in real time here so you can get the idea that you can actually cook a whole meal and get it on the table, all of it ready and all of it hot. Okay, so now what's going on is our water is boiling, our raisins are plumping. So we're going to go over to the sink and we're going to get our cranberries and we're going to dump our cranberries into the pot and hopefully get them all in at the same time. One of them tried to escape and we're not going to let it. And now you're going to just keep stirring. Alright so now they're starting to pop. I'm going to shut up so you can actually hear. Pop, 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 pop. And that's a good sign. It means we're halfway there already. And you'll notice that the liquid is starting to get red, which is good. And it's starting to thicken up. And just keep stirring, that's the key. You don't want to leave them standing alone. No specific way to do it, just whoop. Okay, and when it starts to really splatter, turn the stove down a little bit and keep going. And it'll start to get nice and foamy. You're going to want to do this about maybe, it takes about 10 minutes all in all. can see that just as I'm talking it's actually thickening up. It starts to bubble like pudding or like oatmeal which means you turn it down another notch. On a gas stove this is about number three. And you can see that it's actually bubbling pretty good and it's you're gonna have to clean your stove after this possibly but that's okay. Right, honey? That's all right. I'll wash it. No, you won't. I will. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is just eat and be treated like the queen you are. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, now you, can, you see how the liquid here is getting nice and thick? That's good. It means that when we take this off the flame in a couple of minutes, it's just going to keep getting thicker and make a nice jelly, kind of. This is going to be the best cranberry sauce you've ever had. We're going to turn this down another notch. And you can see now that all the cranberries have actually popped. And all the pectin from the cranberries is going into the liquid and it's making it nice and thick. Pectin is what makes jelly jelly and it's what makes this stuff nice and thick and nice. And now we're going to turn off our heat. 
and stir for another second. Pull back a minute, honey. Thank you. And we're going to go to our Grand Marnier. And we're going to take the cork out. Don't do this while the flame is on. There is alcohol in here and it could flare up. And we're going to go one, two. Two second pour. And we're going to give this another stir. And take it completely off the burner. And we're done. As simple as that. Okay, now you've seen how to make cranberry compote and it's just that easy. Even you can't fuck this up. Okay, so we've finished the cranberry sauce and now what we're going to do is we're going to take it out of the pan because doing it in a pot is just tacky when it's on the table. And we want things to look nice because food that tastes great, that's one thing. Food that looks great, that's just plain sexy. Alright, so we're at 25 minutes here. And now it's time for rice. Listen, rice is really hard. Don't bother. Go around the corner of the Chinese joint. That's where I'm going right now. I'm going to go and buy some rice. I'm going to show you the proper way to cook rice. Get your ass over here and I'll show you how to do it properly. You sure I can't fuck up? Um, is this easy enough now I can't fuck up? No. No? You'll be fine. I'll show you. I'll guide you through. I'm not going to fuck go. Okay. I'm going to cook rice. All right, what do I do? Get a pot, two-quart pot. Okay, I got one of those. Pour two cups of water into the pot. I can do that. Put, put it on a hard boil. Put it on a hard boil. Okay. That's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. I fucked turn. up already, you see? <laughs> you gotta turn the right burner on, Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. All right, and I wait for that to boil. Wait for it to boil. Put a lid on the pot. Put a lid on the pot. Ladies and gentlemen, two cups of cold water in a boiling pot. And through the magic of video, we have a lid on the pot. Hey, honey. Yes? I forgot to ask you something. What kind of rice are we using? We're using Uncle Ben's parboiled white rice. And why are we using it? That's the best on the market. None of this brown horse shit, Kona rice, I don't know what you even call it, but white rice parboiled is the best for us. Is it, that's because it's easy to cook? No, it just tastes better. Works for me. Works for me. We're at 17 minutes and it's time to start the rice. Okay, honey, what do we do now? We have boiling water, as you see. We're going to add one quarter teaspoon of salt to that. Okay. A dash of butter. We're going to add one cup of parboiled long grain white rice. Uncle Ben's in this case? Uncle Ben's in this case. Uncle Ben's perverted rice. Okay, and we dump that into the dump water. Dump that in. Give it a little stir. Put the lid back on. Forget about it. Turn it on low and just forget about it for about 15 minutes. It'll be all done. Nice and fluffy. Okay, and look how much time we have left on the timer for the chicken. 15 minutes. That means that when the rice is finished, the chicken will be finished, and all will be well with the world. Okay, so we have the rice on the stove, and it's been going for about 10 minutes already, so should I take off the lid and check it? No, no, don't take the lid off. The steam will all come out. It's the steam that wants to cook the rice. So in other words, if I take the lid off... You'll fuck up the rice. And this is recipes. You then, can't fuck up. There you go. T minus seven minutes. And we have our chicken, which is still in the oven. Our chicken is cooking nicely. As you can see, it looks very beautiful. Our cranberry compote has been transferred to a corningware dish. So it looks nice too. And I'm going to show you something that's very important. 
in a happy marriage or to start a good relationship. See any dishes in the sink? No? That's right. Clean as you cook and you're not going to have as hard of a job. Right, honey? You're right. Wash them dishes. Okay, our timer has gone to zero, which should mean that everything's ready. So, what are we going to do with the rice, honey? We're going to check the rice. Okay. Oh, it looks lovely. See? Ah, uh, so No does. water. Fluff it up a little. Bingo. Done. Okay. And this is a recipe? Even you can't fuck up. So there's our nice little chicken on our little bed of rice. And give yourself a nice little bowl. Nice pretty bowl. Preferably one that's going to match your dishes. And spoon out some of this nice warm cranberry compote. Unless you want to put it on the plate with the chicken and rice, and that's fine too. But putting it in a bowl just gives you a little bit more of that restaurant experience. And besides, it's going to look real pretty on your table. See? There you go. Easy chicken paprikash, easy rice, easy warm cranberry compote. And this is a recipe made for anyone. Can't fuck it up. Enjoy, guys. Thanks. Bye. And there it is on a nicely set table. Bon appetit. How's it taste, honey? It's wonderful. Thank you. Have chicken. a great day. Chicken cooked okay? Chicken's wonderful. Rice has done everything perfecto. Okay. Bon appetit, everybody.